Drinking and driving is an extremely careless and stupid thing to do, and everyone who does it is an asshole. That's just a fact. And that's why so many laws concerning alcohol revolve around cars and highways. In the United States, it's illegal to drive a car at or above 0.08% blood alcohol content. But this was not always the case. In fact, the original legal limit of 0.15% blood alcohol content wasn't established until 1938. And before that, there was no established limit at all. If you could stumble your way from the pub to your Model T, in the eyes of the law, you were good to go. And it wasn't until as recently as 1998 that former President Bill Clinton issued a directive calling for a national limit of 0.08. And 2004, by the time all 50 states had implemented that limit. But why do you have to be 21 years old to drink in the US when you're legally an adult at the age of 18? That actually has a lot to do with highways as well, or more specifically, federal highway funding. Now the drinking age in the US is not technically federal law. It's up to each individual state to determine, and yet it's 21 across the board with the exception of Puerto Rico and the US Virgin Islands where the drinking age is 18. And much like the legal blood alcohol limit, there wasn't much enforcement on the issue of drinking age prior to the Prohibition era, 1920 to 1933. For the most part, before Prohibition, if you were old enough to reach the bar, you could sit in the saloon all day as a nine-year-old drinking warm whiskey and flat beer. After alcohol Prohibition was repealed with the 21st Amendment, some states made the drinking age 18, but most made it 21. Now, 21 was not just some arbitrary number they decided on, it was actually the voting age at the time. In 1971, the voting age was lowered to 18, and many states lowered their drinking age to match it, which means that by the mid-70s, the drinking age in most of the US was 18 or 19. About a decade later, due to pressure from groups like Mothers Against Drunk Driving and a growing concern with alcohol-related traffic deaths in the country, the United States Senate passed the National Minimum Drinking Age Act of 1984, which threatened to cut 10% of federal highway funding to any state that did not make their drinking age 21 again. Now this forced the hand of the states who could not afford to maintain their highways in the face of this funding cut, and by 1988, all 50 states had obediently stepped in line. So, pretty much the entire country now agrees that you have to be 21 to drink and the legal blood alcohol limit is 0.08. But one area of alcohol law where there is still a lot of variation in regards to vehicles is open containers, commonly referred to as road sodas. Open container law governs the circumstances in which you are allowed or not allowed to have booze in public places or in a motor vehicle. Now, in certain circumstances, having alcohol in a moving vehicle is considered fine in almost all of the states. Limousines are considered kosher because the back is a separate compartment and RVs are often given the same consideration. Some states even allow you to drink in the back of a cab. Anyway, around the time that Bill Clinton was championing the 0.08 limit, a federal act was passed called the Transportation Equity Act for the 21st Century, or TEA 21. Among other things, it restricts the use of open containers of alcohol in vehicles, but not all states conform to this standard. As of 2018, 11 states still allow passengers to have open containers of alcohol in moving vehicles, with a few exceptions. Here in the state of Tennessee, for example, it's totally fine to be sailing down the motorway as a passenger and crack open a cold one with the boys. As long as none of the boys are driving. Here in lovely California, any alcohol container in a car has to be sealed and unopened, and if it's not, it has to be transported in the back or in a trunk. Most of the lesser non-California states have similar restrictions. Now, bear in mind I'm not a lawyer, obviously, so take everything I say here with a grain of salt. But basically we've established that sometimes it's legal for a passenger to have a beer in a car. But what about the driver? Is it ever legal for the actual driver of a car to drink and drive? Surprisingly, yes. There is still one state that allows the driver of a car to possess and consume an alcoholic beverage while driving a car, and that state is Mississippi. Now, obviously you have to still be below the legal limit of 0.08, and it's not legal statewide, only in certain counties. But the point is, there is still a small part of the United States where it is legal to do this. Now it's worth pointing out that most of the counties in Mississippi where this is legal have much higher than average rates of alcohol-related traffic fatalities. So you definitely shouldn't do this. Because as I pointed out before, everyone who drinks and drives is an asshole. There is certainly no shortage of nuance and variables to United States liquor law. Some places don't sell booze on Sundays, some dry counties still don't sell booze at all, and some places even let you have a beer while you're driving a car. But drinking and driving is never a good idea, and that isn't going to change anytime soon. 
The next big change to alcohol-related vehicle law will probably have something to do with self-driving cars, because when the car itself is our designated driver, we may not need a legal limit at all. But until then, designate a driver, take a lift, sleep on your friend's couch, do what you gotta do, just don't drive, because that would make you an asshole. Thank you so much for watching that film. It was shot over several weeks in three different US states. I especially want to thank my beautiful girlfriend, Rebo, who let me take a very inconvenient detour into Mississippi during a road trip, just so that she could film me drinking and driving legally. And I wanna give a big shout out to Wiseacre Brewing in Memphis, Tennessee. That brown ale is by far the best alcoholic beverage I have ever drank while driving a car. All right, so before we end the program today, this episode is called DIY DUI. We've obviously already done the DUI segment, so now we're going to do a DIY segment. Before she passed away, my late mother showed me how to make these adorable succulent planters out of old bomber bottles. And today I'm gonna show you how to do it. So basically all you have to do is buy a bottle cutter. So they're super easy to get online, but they don't actually cut the tops off. What they do is score a line, a straight line in the top. See the line in the top? and then you just dip it in boiling water for like maybe 10 seconds, and you run it under cold tap water for 10 seconds, and then you just keep doing that until magically the top just pops right off. So then you just keep repeating that process until you have a large number of adorable cups, and then you just sand down the sharp edges of the glass so that it's smooth. Now, when you're sanding the tops of them, I like to use a power sander with coarse grit the first time around and then hand sand with a finer grit the second time so that they're nice and smooth. But if you're truly brutal, you can just not sand them at all and have really sharp cups that cut you every time you touch them. That's hardcore. Anyway, then you just fill it with potting soil and put a succulent in there and it grows. Succulents are really hard to kill, so you can impress people. Even though you can't actually keep something alive, it'll make it seem like you can keep something alive. You can also use any kind of a plant that grows from a stem cutting. You can look it up online. There's lots of different plants that'll do this. I like to use succulents because that's what mom used. And they don't really require any water, which is nice in California because literally all of our water goes to the almond farmers because of you damn millennials and your insatiable hipster thirst for almond milk, the drought is your fault. All right, well that's it for this episode of What's On Draft. We'll see you in two weeks with a brand new episode at Bearded Iris Brewing in Nashville, Tennessee. We're diving headfirst into the haze craze. So check it out. Cheers. Cheers.